What, you guys want another video already? Christ, I just wiped out four dragons. Can't even tell you to spend a few weeks at the pub. Sooner or later. Anyway, hello and good evening. My name is Morganon, and I bid you all welcome back to Gothic Deuce. Where, uh, well, we just got back from a successful excursion fighting off dragons. But, I don't feel like all is going to plan. We should probably check in with Zardas, because I don't feel like we've learned a whole lot from uh, these here dragons. Well, that's some suspicious noises. That wasn't here the last time we were here. Sounds like there's a lot more of them. Lester, what have you been up to here? Where's Zardas? He's gone. And he left these demonic beings behind in his tower. I think he doesn't want anyone sniffing around his tower in his absence. Where did he go? He didn't say. He only asked me to give you this letter from him. I read it. Sorry, I was curious. And? No idea. I didn't understand a word, man. But one thing's clear to me. We won't see him again anytime soon. I think things just got too hot for him. And he headed for the hills. Really? He's the one who sent us all, all the way out here. Uh, on this massive adventure. While well, he's been squatting here reading his books. And suddenly he's in over his head. You didn't look all that hot. I think I'll have a rest first. You have a rest. Let's read this note. I suspected one of the dragons in the Valley of Mines was a source of evil. I was wrong. If everything has come to pass as I expect, you should now be seeking the halls of Eirdurat. Wow. The foresight of this man. The book you gave to Pyrokar contains all the clues you need. I should have known why the Seekers wanted it so badly. You must get it back. The words, Zarek Bendardo, open it. Don't tell anyone about this. I will attend to more important things now. More important things than the entire motivation of the enemy? Okay. I can't help you with your last task. Only you can defeat the Swords of Evil. We shall meet again. Zardas. Well. It's a bit concerning. You might notice, uh... Oh, is this in worse shape than uh, last time we checked in on it? I don't think so, because we haven't technically... No, we have changed chapter, haven't we? We're in chapter 5 now. So. We're about to head back to the monastery. Um, the interesting thing about this is, until now, every single circle of magic has been tied to progressing to the next chapter. Altogether, chapter 5 can basically be the shortest chapter of all, but on top of that, we can actually get the sixth circle of magic very quickly. Uh, so that's kind of what we're doing here. And actually, I forgot to mention, uh, my plan was basically, um, to have the other two factions up to date by now. So that I could show kind of the strategy for defeating the dragons with those guys. The problem is, uh, I haven't really caught them up yet. And I wanted to get a video out because it's, uh, well, it's been a few weeks as usual. So... Ooh, yeah, we can do something with this as well. But anyway. Uh, for now, let's get back to the monastery. Uh, so we're just going to continue with this. This isn't going to take all too long. I think I did say last time that I was considering um, doing all the rest of the exploration in the Valley of Mines for some of the stuff that we haven't seen yet. That's actually going to wait until uh, next episode of the Mage walkthrough specifically. Just because there's a lot of like power leveling you can do in the valley at the end once you get the circle six spells and make life a lot easier. So we might as well do it then. So let's take care of this biznatch now. I killed all the dragons. Really? So there's more than a glimmer of hope on the horizon. Now all we have to do is cut off the head of evil. If you have indeed done that, then we shall win the war. Who? Me? You, of course. Who else? Yeah, who else indeed? Nobody here, that's for sure. Bunch of lazy chumps. Uh, 
while we're here, let's just learn a certain fifth circle of magic from Caress. Hey, you! I want to learn the fifth circle of magic. Then enter now into the fifth circle of magic. You will command mightier magic than ever before. Use its power wisely, brother. For the darkness is still strong, and so are your enemies. I cannot accompany you into the sixth and highest circle of magic. Pyrocar himself will ordain you when the time comes. I shall be so ordained. Nice for a circle. Where was the fifth? Fifth circle. We get Ice Wave, Large Fuego Storm, Summon Demon, and Heal Heavy Wounds. Ice Wave can actually be really useful circumstantially because unlike the Ice Block, Ice Wave uh, tends to be able to freeze enemies that even are generally able to resist it. Um, which we're actually about to see in a minute because it's really the only, the only strategy I have for what we're about to encounter. How's life in the monastery? I'm going out of my mind here. But anyway, thanks for the hint. Milton was indeed able to help me get a place here. Well, what's a body to do? Before I starve in town, I'd rather do what the novices tell me to. Well, they don't seem to be telling you to do a whole lot because you're just standing here. You'll be all right, I think. What I need is some good old planks beneath my feet. Well, you have to settle for some flagstones for now. You have to feel sorry for the poor guy. I am confused by this man. Where did he get a rusty sword all of a sudden? None of the mages carry weapons generally. I don't know how he came to possess that. Oh yeah, there's a lot of side questy stuff we haven't done. Kind of forgot about that. All the dragons are dead. That is good news indeed, but it does nothing to change our situation, which seems hopeless. The Seekers still have not left. On the contrary, I hear more and more reports that during these last few days, their numbers have even increased. Killing off the dragons has dealt the enemy a blow, but it did not suffice. We need to dig this evil out by the roots. Roots. I talked to the dragons. What did they say? They kept talking about the power of their master and how he settled in the halls of Irdarath. Enos be with us. The Black Temple has regained its power and is now sending its henchmen into our world. Uh, great insight there. What are these halls of Irdarath? The Eastern Invocation Temple of the God Beliar. There are four of them in the land of Mertana, but this one is probably the most terrifying temple of all. About 40 years ago, the northern and western temples of this horrible deity were destroyed. The brave knights of that time gave their all to raise those mighty constructions to the ground. Back then, the black hordes of the enemy were helpless against the superior numbers and the heroic courage of the knights and paladins. It would have been easy to destroy the other two temples as well, and rid the land of evil forever. But after the second temple fell, they simply disappeared. Disappeared? An entire temple? Yeah, right. Do not mock me. The situation is serious. If the halls of Idurath have indeed regained their power, then it will not be easy to defeat the enemy. For that, you would have to find it first. And I think that this will be your next and hardest task. We shall see. Now, I just want to bring up, we heard that two of the temples were destroyed. Two of them disappeared, and the hall of, uh, halls of Eardrath came back. Um, that begs the question, whatever happened to the last one? Because we don't hear about it. I think for... I don't know if I saw the the theory somewhere, or if it's just something that I came up with in my head. But I used to think that the Temple of Bakaresh in Gothic 3 was supposed to be the final temple. Well, that doesn't really make a whole lot of sense, because that's been where it is for the longest time. And nobody ever mentions it having disappeared at any point. So that doesn't really uh, add up to me. Zardis's book, which was believed to be lost, where is it? I have been expecting you would ask that. But I fear that it will be of no help to you. 
It has been magically sealed. I took it to one of our lower vaults, and even we have so far tried in vain to open it. That accursed Zardas has played a dirty trick on us. Can I see the book? Be my guest. I cannot imagine you being successful where the greatest masters of our monastery have failed. But go ahead and give it a try. Talamon is not going to stop you. Well, perhaps the greatest masters of your monastery cannot stand up to my mastery. I can tell you even more about those possessed. Speak, brother. I've found another almanac. That is good. I am afraid, however, that there are more of these to find. Go on searching. Take this. It is a gift from the monastery which will help you when you face evil. A fat sack of gold. That will certainly help. Teach me the last circle of magic. The time for this has not yet come. Once you have walked a little farther on the path that Enos will show you, I shall instruct you. A little farther indeed. We don't have far to go. So. Why don't we take a quick nap and then we'll head down and sort out this book business. While we're here, maybe we can find someone to make use of this dragon egg. And imagine an alchemist of some kind would have an idea of what to do with it. Hey. You seem to have worked up a sweat. Yes, I'm completely exhausted. For days I've been trying to get this confounded concoction to work. I just can't do it. Well, try harder. What kind of a potion is that supposed to be? I bought the recipe from a traveling salesman. It mentions some curious but rather interesting things. I'm not sure if this potion really does anything, but my thirst for knowledge impels me to continue. What's the problem? The recipe says something about a dragon egg. Of course, I don't have one of those things. So I've been trying to simulate that ingredient. However, with little success thus far. If one of those things should ever roll across your path in some cave, then think of me. Well, guess what just happened to happen, other than that it didn't roll. So what are you using instead of the dragon egg? Believe me, you don't want to know. Lizard eggs? I'll see what I can do. Hey, that was only a joke. I do not believe you will really find a dragon egg. Just wait. Here, I've got a dragon egg for you. You're trying to pull my leg. It's real. I hadn't thought it possible. Where did you find it? I'd rather keep that to myself. Excellent. What do you want for it? You just want to boast of your heroic deeds? Give me some of the potion when it's ready. All right, but as I said, I have no idea what will come from it. Come back later when I have finished it. Alrighty. So excited. You are not permitted to go further. Turn back. Pyrocar says I'm allowed to examine Zardus's book. So he says that. All right, you may enter. The book you are looking for is over there on the alchemist's bench. This guy's always been weird to me. Because he's clearly got the high robe of fire as if he's a council member, but he just stands guard here all day. Doesn't seem like a great use of his, uh... Magic talents. All right. Well, we know the magic words here, so. Zarek Bandardo. Ah, the book's open. There's a letter and a key hidden inside. Hmm, fascinating. And so I concealed the entrance to the library behind a secret door to protect my records of Beliar's temples. If my brothers had known of these records, those fools would probably have destroyed them all. Now all they know is that these temples used to exist. Just to be sure, I have sworn some servants to protect the library. The key opens the last door. And this note. This note. The lamp carries the light into the lower regions. Oh my. Is it this lamp? Nope. I always wondered what the hell this alcove was supposed to be. 
It ain't that lamp. Well, we can select this lamp. You know, one of the things I've never checked is whether or not it's possible to activate that lever before we've read the book. I don't see why not. These games don't usually have a whole lot of coding to um, keep things like that inactive, but I suppose there are some such as the winches in Gothic 1, but those are really buggy. Alright, why don't we make a save just to be safe. Hey, you! I found a secret door. What? Where? Behind a bookshelf. What's behind it? It looks like an old underground vault. That is important news. I shall inform Pyrocar of it immediately. Meanwhile, you must find out what's in this cellar. Shouldn't we, like, grab some paladins or other powerful magicians so I'm not doing this alone? I feel like... Talking to Talamon about that is just Piranha Bytes realizing that they didn't... It doesn't make sense that we're doing this all on our own. They didn't really account for the fact that the players might instinctively want to go up and tell the magicians what we're finding down here. Because Talamon doesn't do anything about it, but he's the only person we can talk to. Oh boy! Skeletons! Nice pathfinding. There's not much of a maze down here, but it's enough to cause a bit of confusion, and there are loads of skeletons everywhere. We need to be careful with. Luckily, one zap will do it. Dork. They often come in pairs, so watch out about that. It's worth it sniffing them all out just for the XP. Really? God, the sound effects are going bananas down here. I heard you. I suppose I should, uh, spark a light. Nice, no sound effects on that. I heard a swing. Eh? Oh. Why is the light sound effect coming a million years late? I'm having way buggier sound effects than I was in my test run of this. So I think that's all of them. But now we find this room here, and we have to be careful because... There's a skeleton mage, and he's a bit of a dick because he has the ice block spell. Nothing there. He doesn't carry anything because we already have the key. We can actually hear the novices talking all the way upstairs, which actually does present a problem here. Um, because we're about to encounter something quite dangerous, and uh, the only valid approach that we have right now, which really doesn't end up being that valid, is to use Fire Rain. But Fire Rain has such a high vertical uh, hitbox to it, or area of effect, that it often kills the novices in the yard up above. So we can't really use it. Hey, you! I've been to the vault. And what did you find? There was a skeleton warrior down there, guarding a door. I killed him. Well done. We shall deal with the vault once we have caught evil. Yeah, so that's what I mean about this. Like, even talking to Talamon seems like a cop-out kind of thing when they realize it doesn't make sense that we're doing all this on our own. 
But uh, that's not really the end of the road here, so it's worth it just for the XP. Um, if you wait until you come and kill the um, skeleton mage like I did, you miss out on a lot of dialogues, but it doesn't affect it much of anything because uh, all the XP comes with the last statement there. Now, this door here, there's a trick with it. Which we're about to see. Once we open it. <laughs> so once that sound effect triggers, that actually spawns a lot of enemies up ahead. And in the live streams, I was able to... I was able to basically um, break the animation for opening this door. And I can't remember... Ah, that was how. Shoot. So if you draw your weapon partway through opening the door, you can get inside. Because the actual spawn trigger um, doesn't really happen until the door is just about fully open. So if you manage to do that, you can avoid all the enemies in the next area. That's not how I want to do it, because that's an exploit. We are actually unequipped to... Wow, there's three of them? There are always three of them? I swear there's only two of them. Um, what we actually are going to do here... None of our spells that we have right now have enough oomph to take these jerks down. See, that barely did shit. And the problem is, he just kind of stands there. Meanwhile, I would really like it if I could have gotten the other one. Oh, I did get the other one. Alright, so these guys have a bit more reach than it looks like they have. The real important thing is that there's a third one around the corner. So. I'm gonna save just in case this doesn't quite work. Uh oh, he's floating away. What we gotta do. The fire rain spell actually isn't that useful against them because of their high um, magic defense. Uh, I think it takes three of them to actually take them down. We only got, well, we got three left. But like I said, it kills people upstairs, so we don't want to use it. Instead, got one of these bad boys. And we're gonna go waboosh. And hurry along. You see, we got them all stuck there. There are goods on the table here. We're gonna snatch these real quick. But most importantly, we need to quickly read this. Ah, I don't actually want to see it. So I want to show you some. Oh god! Ow! 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 Ah, bastard! Damn it! Just because I took took too long. Basically, I wanted us- I wanted to be able to pause it and let us read it, but... Ooh. It's not really that important. What's important is that you activate it and get the diary entry. Because that lets us do what comes next. But anyway. The speed potion that will at least make this a little bit easier. A little snatchy snatch. There are other books down here. They're not that important. But like I said, we're coming back anyway. Just want to read this real quick. Yada, yada, yada. You can pause on that frame if you really want to see what it says. But instead, we're just going to do a runner. Basically, you read that book. What it tells us is that... There is a spell that we can make. And that spell ends up basically being your primary firepower for the rest of the game. But we can read the other me things in the meantime. Here's a dusty book. I'm now certain that the building is the Halls of Eardoreth. They are located on an island quite near the harbor of Corinus. Beliar's interest in the ore mines is obvious. The signs are unmistakable. When the one comes, he will get. He will need all the help we can give him. Beliar is already too strong. If I if if have succeeded in obtaining some valuable artifacts, I'm guessing that's just what say I have. 
which I will keep down here just in case. I suspect the Chosen One will come from among our ranks, so I have written instructions in the Almanac for him. I am now certain we cannot stay the hand of fate. As soon as Beliar feels strong enough, he will arise and seek to rule the world. I must find the one, else we are all doomed. So, that just really hammers home the whole prophecy aspect that kind of spoils the everyman appeal of the hero in, the, in this game. Which is unfortunate. But, uh, that's fine. Gothic 3 kind of throws all that into the fucking dumpster anyway. But, what's important, the secret of the library. Rune created. So basically, the almanac, which was the last book, the bookshelf that we read, um, explains that we just need to pour water on a rune stone, blank rune stone, to get this holy missile spell. Which, unfortunately, we need to be circle six to use. But, once we read this map here, a sea chart to the Isle of Irdareth, we will actually uh, be able to do that. Hmm. There's some uh, dialogue that's supposed to happen here. Didn't trigger for some reason, so uh, I'll just plug it in. Good news! The roadside shrines have been purified. The that happened weeks ago. Enos has helped the paladins to remove this problem from the world. You may once again make your donations to Enos without reservation or regret. Ah, good point. I don't think we've actually done all those. Did we? Yeah, we did. Did we? I think I did. We'll find out shortly. I've been able to open Zardis's book. What? How did you do that? It well nigh drove me to despair. So, I forget that... Yeah, I think there's a difference in the amount of XP you get based on which answer you tell him. Uh, I think you get more XP for keeping Zardas a secret, but... Just dumb luck, I suppose. I don't remember. Don't talk nonsense. Luck! When not even I succeed in opening the book, and then someone like you comes waltzing in? That gives me something to ponder about. Anyway, since you were obviously the only one who was able to open the book, then may it be granted unto you to carry it, at least until we have weathered this crisis. I shall carry it with pride. <laughs> we don't need it. I know where to find the halls of Erdurath. The temple is on an island. I found a nautical chart which shows the way. That is great! Then you will need a ship and a crew in order to face the enemy. But remember, you need to be well prepared if you want to vanquish the master of Idorath. Where can I find a crew? Your crew should consist of men you can trust. Talk to your friends and think about who could be useful to you once you are on the island. You are going to need a magician as well. But alas, I cannot spare a single man from the monastery. You will have to ask a magician who is not working within the monastery. Well, then we'll pick one who's working five steps outside the monastery. Teach me the last circle of magic. A lot of time has passed since you have entered the bond with the fire. Much has happened, and we find no rest. You are the chosen of Enos. Therefore, you will need all your strength to prevail in your battles. I shall now consecrate you, chosen one. You are entering the sixth circle. May you bring light and disperse the darkness. We've been you in the circle learn before. You can the magic formulas for the last circle from me, if you so desire. Oh, and one more thing. It took me a while to recognize you. You got that letter from me back when they threw you into the barrier. Yes, you spared me the judges blathering that way. And you are the Chosen of Enos. Receive now my blessing, O oh Chosen One. Enos! Light of the sun and fire of the world, bless this man, your chosen servant. Give him courage, strength, and wisdom to follow the path which you have ordained for him. Man, wouldn't have recognized you with your completely different voice and all. Uh, but yeah, I guess that kind of feels like a throwaway line to explain, um, who that mage was in the intro of Gothic 1. But, well... At least now we know. The prophecy mentions the sacred aura of Inos. 
The Aura of Enos is an amulet which only the greatest magicians of an era are destined to wear. There's always a magic amulet, isn't there? What sort of amulet is that? They say that Enos himself forged it and gave it as a present to humankind. It protects the one who wears it from all kinds of damage. Can I have it? What? What do you want to do with that? Go up against the dragon. Yes, of course. I shall give you the amulet, but handle it with care. Yeah, sure. I do not wish to buy <laughs> sure. it back from a merchant later. Use it well, and may Enos guard you at all times. It's weird that he says, I want the amulet to go up against the dragon, because we can only ask for it after we've killed all the dragons. Bit of an oversight there, isn't it? Jorgen is an experienced sailor. He could help me get to the Isle of Irdarath. That will not be so easy, I fear. He has signed on to work for the Brotherhood. He has neither paid the tribute, nor brought us a sheep. Jorgen must finish his work first, then you can take him with you if you like. How long will it take? He used up the provisions which would have lasted a novice three weeks, and all on the first day. So I cannot let him go before he has worked hard in our gardens for three months. My god, you're just so petty that you insist on hamstringing us when we're clearly trying to save the world, man. With all your nonsense. What do I have to do so I can take Jorgen with me now? Hmm. There is indeed one thing you could do for me. Your good rapport with Zardas could help you with that. It has come to my attention that during these last few days, strange things have been going on in his tower. Many of the town people hear loud screams at night coming from there, and see strange lights dancing over his tower. As if we didn't have our plate full already. Go check what is going on there, and make it stop. Then you can have Jorgen. Sounds simple enough, except that we know that they are demons, and demons are dangerous. What are the Tears of Enos? The Tears of Enos are nothing but an old child's tale. It tells of how the battle between Enos and Beliar started at the beginning of time. I found this potion. That cannot be. I cannot believe it. What's the matter? If these are really the genuine Tears of Enos, then... Hardly. Do not interrupt me. If these are the real Tears of Enos, then we have a powerful weapon against the enemy. What do you mean by weapon? Legend has it that under the influence of this substance, the warriors of Enos were able to perform almost superhuman deeds. They were immune to all kinds of exhaustion and had the strength of two bears. Two whole the bears. The greatest heroic feats of the olden days were only made possible by the tears of Enos. I understand. But the tears can bring suffering and death as well. Only the members of our order may drink this draft. Anyone else, even the paladins of our lord, would face a cruel death. Well, that's just too ex so exclusive, isn't it? So what are the tears of Enos? When Enos realized that he had to fight Beliar, his own brother, in order to preserve creation, his sorrow was great. He started to weep, and his tears fell down onto the world. There were many of them, for his heart was so full of grief that he wept for 13 years. What a crybaby. The people who found his tears and tasted them were filled with supernatural strength and clarity. They recognized the wisdom of Enos' creation and began to serve him. They were the first members of the community of the fire. The tears gave them strength, courage, and wisdom. But that is all very long ago, and it has been more than 250 years since anyone last set eyes on a tear of Enos. Well, now we have eyes on him. I gotta be honest, among other things, the Tears of Enos story kind of pisses me off, because it's just another thing that just throws a wrench into the whole creation myth and everything of... Uh, Enos and Beliar and Adnos and all that. Um, because if you read the, whatever the name of the book was in the first game. Don't tell me you didn't know that. Uh, 
Yeah, I think it says something like Adnos and uh, Beliar were both like another, uh, like a persona of Enos that he kind of split from himself. So, I don't know. All, all this is just kind of, it seems like it's been written on the spot. And it doesn't make it, uh, it, it doesn't all add up. Anyway, uh, we can learn Fire Rain and whatever six circle spells we want, which actually most important is probably the Army of Darkness. We will learn shortly, but for now, I just want some of this, as it's time to clean house. So if you haven't gotten the, uh, the implication, oh yeah, we should probably take a look at these tiers, but, um, the thing with the tiers is... Basically, it's just a strength bonus. I just heard a skeleton crunch for some reason. Strength 5, dexterity 5, and completely healed. So it's just a little bit of bonus for us. It doesn't really do us a whole lot of good. Because we're not using those abilities. Um, well, only mages can drink it. And it's interesting how, many, how often mages get a bonus um, to strength and dexterity and physical attributes that we really aren't using much. But I guess that lends some credence to the people who insist that even magicians should be using melee weapons. Even though I'm pretty sure... It, I see, I just kept... I kept insisting on this. I keep forgetting whether or not I was right. But I'm pretty sure in Vanilla Gothic 2, um, once you become a mage, all the physical skills and attributes take twice as many learning points to increase. But that was changed in Night of the Raven. And I'm guessing it's for exactly that reason, because when they did the, um, when they rebalanced all the difficulty of everything, they realized that magic alone just wasn't cutting it. So they got rid of that penalty for mages. But anyway, ha. Huh. We got this now, and four doses does a demon. I think we need, uh... Six or seven to do a demon lord. One, two. It's interesting that the projectile seems to keep going, but as far as I know, it can only hit one target. Yeah, it's quite expensive. Uh, I think, what, 60 mana does 300 damage? But the fact that it's a single projectile, it does a lot of per hit damage, so... That's what makes it worth. This guy's having a struggle. So that's our first Demon Lord. Demon Lords did exist in Gothic 1, right? I don't quite remember. Yeah, I think they were the ones that uh, every time you stabbed a Shaman Heart. Weird. Every time you read this, it updates the diary entry again. I hope the dome may protect the ore from the menace of Beliar. The king is naive enough to believe that we built the dome as protection against breakouts. Well, as long as such ruses enable us to fulfill our higher goals, let it be so. I can only hope that we have enough time left to prepare for the fight. As soon as the dome around the Valley of Mines has been erected, huh, I will use all the power at my disposal to intervene in the impeding fight. I followed the instructions and simply poured Innos' holy water over a blank runestone on the rune table. Runestone was destroyed. I suspect this spell is accessible only to the one. I left the Holy Aura of Innos in the protection of the monastery. The abbot will take care of it himself until the one reveals himself. Tears of Innos may have a vital part to play in the fight ahead, but it's too dangerous to keep them where all can see. I better leave them here in the library. So, if you haven't caught on yet, all this is this is basically Zardas's library. And his last book of wisdom here. Completely useless. But yes, so that reveals a twist, which is that Zardas actually, yeah, actually uh, came up came up with the barrier plan himself. Pardon, came up with the barrier plan himself and had ulterior motives for it. What those motives are, I'm not exactly sure. 
Uh, he never really lets on what he intended to do, but I suspect that he basically wanted to try and imprison the sleeper in a way, or that he knew all this was going to happen and he knew that the only way we could get this to work was to get the per to get the chosen one to encounter the sleeper, and that was his plan to do it. I don't know, plots like that are too contrived for me to really believe in, so... I don't really know what to make of it. Kinda can't stand it. But it be how it is. Oh yeah, the Holy Aura of Inos is this here. So if we get rid of this, we lose a set bonus for... Uh, mana for having the, the priest set from Jarkandar. But this gives us very broken sound effects and 30 additional protection in all damage types. So it's nice and all, but I'd rather keep the mana. So our approach to combat really amounts to just never taking hits. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to bother with the Fire Rain spell as a rune because I mean we have three scrolls left and no matter how many um, man that train of thought went nowhere um, I basically don't know of enough circumstances. Actually, what am I talking about? I am going to get it because that's how we're going to power level in the Valley of Mines. Man, I'm tired tonight. Sorry, I just took like a three and a half mile walk, so... I'm not quite myself right now. Broomstick. So let's learn what we gotta learn from you, sir. I think Power Card has all of the Instruct me. Circle Six runes, so... Ooh, see, I'm glad we saved our fucking learning points, because holy shit, these are more expensive than I thought. Oh. Where's Army of Darkness? A uh, Shrink Monster... We'd only have one enemy to really use that against, and I don't think we really need to. Do want fire rain? I don't think we have enough left for army of dankness. But I think Karas teaches us that. Hey, teach me. Oh yeah, but we can do it. Uh, summon Demon would be helpful too, but Army of Darkness... Basically, it just summons six skeletons at once. It's not the best thing in the world, but... The fact that it lets us summon them so quickly... Uh... I don't know. It really makes, uh, makes things a lot easier later. That's a forest circle. So, we need Pitch, Sulfur, and Tongue of Fire. So, I think I said it before, but Gorax has... Every time we learn a spell that we need, Gorax gets all the materials that we need to make it. Except, apparently, that's not correct. I think he only gets a spell scroll that we need, because he has exactly one of those. So, I uh, apparently am a liar. Oh yeah, we never got our uh, money back from beef. Someone called me out on that in one of my videos recently. So I guess we'll let him keep it. Now Biff we can actually take as one of our crew members when we go... Uh, ...to the end game here. Uh, 
Um, the trick with the crew members is that essentially you don't have enough room on your ship to take everybody who is able to come with you. So you have to be a bit choosy about it. The most interesting thing is that there are three captains you can choose from. Uh, they each have different requirements for doing it. And one is actually quite extreme, but we'll cover that in one of the other playthroughs. So. Hey, I heard you spent a long time in the monastery cellars. What did you find out? I know now where the enemy is hiding. It's a small island not far from here. This is our big chance. We have to set out at once and destroy evil forever. Have you talked to Diego about it? I think he would want to accompany you. What about Gorn? Talk to him. I heard that he has returned from the Valley of Mines. And don't forget Lester. If you don't drag him out of his valley, he'll rot there. I also know my role in all this. I can increase your mana and be helpful in constructing runes once we face the enemy. When do we start? Well, who says I'm taking you? And it's also presumptive of you to act like you're that useful when you're a lower ranking magician than me. Welcome aboard. We should meet at the harbor. Wait for me there. Good. I'll be there when you're ready. Well, we haven't exactly uh, come up with a plan for a ship yet. We only know of one ship, and I don't think uh, we're going to get our hands on it that easily. But uh, anyway, I think that's where I'm going to wrap it up for now. Not much happened in this video, but uh, uh, what are you going to do? So, until next time, uh, I'll have to work out what exactly I'm going to do. Because we still got some dragons to defeat. We got a valley of mines to romp around in. And uh, yeah, so probably we're close to the end at this point. Um, but I really want to make sure we cover it. Oh yeah, we got some side quests to finish up as well. There's probably a good 10 episodes left in this, so... Uh, if I can get my act together, we can actually have this wrapped up by the end of the year, so... Well, time will tell. Otherwise, hope you have yourselves a wonderful week. Stay safe, stay healthy, take care of yourselves. And uh, don't forget to follow on Twitch. Or uh, join... Ugh, Jesus, I don't do this often enough. Don't forget to follow on Twitch for Weekend Nonsense. This is the month of October, so uh, I haven't really made the announcement, but we are doing a bit of horror-themed stuff on the weekends. Unfortunately, it's already started as of this point, so you missed part of it. But uh, other than that, you can also click the link to join the Discord, my Discord server as well, if you're interested. Otherwise... We will see you next time.